The minute I start rolling tape, this thing just shuts right up. All right, so you see this is tuned, there we go. This is tuned into the APRS frequency. And that sound is coming out of the microphone, which gives me an idea. Oh, look at all that dust which gives me an idea about making a cable. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. A while ago, we talked about getting APRS on the Redivis RT95 radio. And I didn't know if it was possible. Nobody's talked about doing this the way that I wanna do it on the internet or on YouTube or anything so far. So we're, we're blazing territory here. We're gonna see what we can do. I'm gonna make up a janky cable. I'm gonna try and send some messages back and forth. We're gonna do all this stuff on Linux and we're gonna make it happen. Let's go get to work. This is the cable that you use for programming the radio. So this plugs into the speaker mic port and you can see that there's two wires on it and that's a good start. It's an interesting start, that's a good start. But this is where the problem comes in and this is great for programming but this is not great for doing APRS work. This has a programming chip inside of it that converts USB to serial which is why you only have the two wires in there, transmit and receive. So, we need a different cable. What else do we know that has eight wires in it and an RJ45 plug? This is an old ethernet cable that I had laying around. I used it on a different project and cut it to bits for that. And then this here is a TRRS tip ring ring sleeve jack. So you've got left channel, right channel audio, ground, and microphone. That means audio into the computer and audio I mean, audio into the radio and audio into the computer on these guys here. And then I just need to figure out what to do with these wires and where they go. So I've got a little diagram I'll show you here in a second. But before we get too much farther down there, I have learned a valuable lesson. One of these wires has plus five volts on it for the lights on the keypad of the radio. So we need to protect ourselves from ourselves. I'm gonna get a little bit of tape and cut it, and then I will individually place these wires onto this tape. Yeah, I could probably do individual pieces of tape, but I'm already down this path and I'm stubborn. All right, and I can tell from the physical relief inside that I have got them all separated, so they're not gonna come in contact with anything. And if we get this right, we will figure out a better solution, but what I wanted to do was get these wires connected up. If we take a look at the owner's manual for the RT95, I know, read manuals, right? Who does that? There is the microphone itself diagrammed here and what all the buttons do. And then right below that is this connector outline and it tells us all kinds of stuff except for where that audio for the speaker comes from. I did a bunch of digging on the internet and I found out that it comes out of pin five. You could also do a bunch of troubleshooting and connecting and wiring and listening and playing, but well, we have the internet. Why don't we just short circuit all that? So let's take this diagram and do something. Poof. All right, how about this? So I have that same diagram copied over here. I embiggened the data that it gave us on the pins. So this is all of the different stuff that's on here. Again, pin five is labeled as up. That's the up button on the microphone, on the handheld microphone itself. But that's also, if you're not pushing the up button, that's where the audio comes back out so you can hear it in the speaker mic in your hand. Now we need to figure out on the PC side, the tip ring ring sleeve jack, where all that stuff connects and do a little bit of a diagram. So on the PC side, I've got your typical TRRS jack. And this is how I wanna have all of this stuff wired up. We're gonna need two grounds. One ground for the speaker, one ground for the microphone. Ground is ground is ground is ground. So I don't know why they expose multiple grounds, but they do. And so I'm gonna take those two grounds and I'm gonna tie them together. And then I'm taking the speaker audio and putting that onto the tip, which would be the left channel audio into the PC. That might be important in the future, but this is not stereo quality audio. You just need to if, if you run into a problem where you need that, you'll remember that we only have left channel audio. Uh, and then the microphone goes into the sleeve. These here are the color codes for the standard EIA TIA 568 ethernet cable. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. I'm just reusing a cable. It's eight conductors. It's What's important is I put down what colors I had in my cable. Yours might be in a very slightly different order. It doesn't matter, just use the appropriate line that runs from pin five for your speaker 
whatever color that winds up being, blue for me, to the tip on your audio PC jack. And we have our meter plugged into continuity mode. And so what I wanna do is I want to take the ground, which is gonna be this middle here, ring two, and I wanna look for speaker voltage on the tip. And continuity is not what I want, I want voltage. And we've got 3.3 volts there between microphone and ground because I'm not transmitting, I have negative voltage. All right, and then we just received some data and we're back to silence. Let's wait for a packet to come in. And it gets worse when you really try to look for it. There we go. Okay, so nothing there. Here is our next spectacular level. I have the spectacular level of, of fireworks launching. I have the cable plugged into the radio. I have it plugged into my breakout, which is plugged into my TRRS, which is plugged into a TRS TRS splitter for microphone and audio. And I've got it plugged into a sacrificial sound card. This is important because I don't know if I got this right or not, but I'd rather sacrifice a $5 sound card than a very expensive three-figure, two-figure laptop. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so we have the radio on, we have the cable made up, we have it plugged into the cheap sound card, we heard that it's doing decodes. Yeah, there's some stuff going on there, we'll fix that a little bit later. Progress is awesome. Now I've got it plugged into my Linux computer and I wanna try and get Direwolf set up with it. Let's see what we got to see. There we go. It's a little bit better. LS USB to see what we've got. We've got Creative Technology Sound Blaster X5 Go Pro, and that is the sound card in question. Okay, so now we need to do a record dash L to list devices. And we've got card one, device zero is our Sound Blaster X5 Go Pro. Excellent. So let's edit our Direwolf config. And we already are on plug HW1 comma zero. So let's run Direwolf and see if we decode anything. I'm staring at the radio. And of course, it's silent when you want it to not be silent. Oh boy. <laughs> it worked. It freaking worked. I love it. Now transmit. Let's figure that out. How do we send a packet? There's a lot of different ways to send a packet. I just want to prove that this thing works. So I'm going to use the KISS util. KISS is Keep It Simple Stupid, and it's a TNC application that connects to Direwolf to send and receive data. I'm going to do this really simple, really straightforward. I'm going to go over to a new tab on my computer. I've got a folder called test that I'm you know, testing things in. And in there, I have a test file, and I have an inbox and an outbox. And this is kind of the way that the KissUtil works. So I need to run kissutil-o inbox. O is the folder that I want to store the output from Direwolf. F is the outbox. It's the folder I want to monitor for files to send out over the TNC. So if I run this, it's going to start decoding also. So the next time a packet comes through, let's take a look at Direwolf. It says, attached KISS TCP client application zero on port 8000, that's the KISS util. Ready to accept KISS TCP client application one on port 8001, that's the sending. We just got a packet that came in. Let's see if KISS util saw it. KISS util did indeed see it. Let's go into our folder for our inbox. I've got files. Oops, I'm gonna just cat all of them. The last one on the list here is N0QVC and let's see N0QVC and let's see N0QVC and then we got two more packets while I was showing you all that. So there's a one for one for one. We've, we saw it in, in Direwolf. We heard it on the radio. We saw it decoded in Direwolf. We saw Kishutil figure it out and we saw it written out to disk. Fantastic. Now we've got receiving coming in and going into a, a KISS application. That means that Zaster is going to work or Yak's going to work or any of the other clients are going to work because we just proved that concept. That's proved the sending message concept. So I'm going to go back up a level from my inbox and I've got this test message. I've written this test message in APRS message format. And so it's got my call. It's got APDR 15 comma wide one dash one. And then it says test message from RT95. RT95 is the radio that we're using today. So I wanna copy this file into the outbox, APRS text into the outbox. What's gonna happen is the KISS util is gonna see that file, open it up, read its contents, send it out over the wire, and then delete the file because it's it's processed it. So there's no reason to keep it. So I'm gonna copy it and then we're gonna 
go reverse our steps. All right, so we've copied that, and it says processing APRS dot dash text dot text for transmit, and there's the contents of the message. Let's go over to Direwolf. Did Direwolf see it? Yes, Direwolf did in fact see it. Now we got to go record the radio and see it go out over the radio. So we're going to rearrange all this stuff and set it up again and watch that same packet go out over the radio. This is awesome. All right, we are looking at the radio and I got my super jank audio cable hooked up. I am going to copy that file to the outbox and we're going to watch it process. So you can see up here at the top, it says RX and whether there's any traffic or not, that should say TX and then we'll see some power going out doing the thing. Receiving a packet, copying file, there it goes. Ta-da! Okay, now we are across the room on another radio. Let's switch this over to two meters. Let's switch this down to a uh, frequency of 144390000. And let's start listening. Turn our squelch on. And I'm not gonna decode. I just wanna see that it actually went out across the wire. Let's send that message again. Oh yeah. That did the thing. All right, this is getting interesting. We've got a physical interface, check. We have receiving messages, check. We have transmitting messages, eh, kinda, kinda check? I don't know. I'm, I'm getting noise out, but I'm not actually able to decode, which is the next step in the process here. So what I found out is I'm running Vox. Vox is not a good idea, but it's what I got right now. It's where I'm at right now, and that's, that's good enough to to get to the other end of this proof of concept, like, do we want to go farther? And the answer is yes, yes, we want to go farther. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to adjust some settings inside of Direwolf Configs. I'm going to quit Direwolf by hitting Control Break, Control C, and I'm going to edit my direwolf.conf file. And I'm going to add this channel zero, transmit delay, and transmit tail. I played with these numbers for a while. Again, this is totally unacceptable in the grand scheme of things, but let's get to the other end of the proof of concept. This is a delay, I think this is milliseconds, and it takes a while for the Vox circuit to open up and the message to get transmitted, and as a result, the front half of the message gets cut off. Can't lose the front half of the message or you lose all of the message. That's not a good thing. And then secondarily, I need it to kind of gracefully exit. So TX tail 10, I might not need any TX tail, but I put a TX tail of 10 in there and it seems to work and I'm not messing with it because it works right now. We'll get this all fixed up in the next video, so make sure you're subscribed for that. So we saved this. We're gonna run Direwolf again, and it's gonna get all started up, and we should receive a packet. You know how ham radio works. When you're actively listening for something, that's when the whole world goes silent. All right, we're gonna receive a packet sometime sooner or later. I need to start up my Kiss Util to do the inbox outbox monitoring stuff. This is just the, the client that I'm using right now as we discussed earlier. You can use any client you want. Oh, see, there's a message. KF0, KFL sent a message, position report, and a bunch of junk. I don't know what the, the junk is at the end of the message, but there's junk at the end of the message. We'll get there. We'll learn all this stuff as time goes by. Okay, so now, the thing that, that I did behind the scenes. Remember that all-in-one cable stream that we did? I plugged my all-in-one cable into my BTEC 6x2. I plugged that into a Raspberry Pi. I configured Direwolf on the Raspberry Pi, all of that coming up in future videos, so that it will do decode so I can prove that I am getting decodes. So if we go back over here, that is what this machine is. This machine is running Direwolf on the Raspberry Pi and it is listening and so on. So we have Direwolf on the Raspberry Pi, we have Direwolf on this machine, and then we have the Kiss Util monitoring the inbox and the outbox. I'm gonna go in and I found out that I needed to modify my message format. So let's look at our APRS message and something in the coordinates wasn't good. So what I did was I just copied half of the message from somebody else and then edited it to suit my needs. This is probably a lot better than saying take off, but not as good as saying what actually should be a real message. Again, proof of concept. We're getting there. We're making progress. I love it. So new message, test message from RT95. So let me go ahead and save this file. And then I want to copy this file into the outbox. Again, from earlier, you copy it into the outbox. The Kiss Util sees the file, opens it up, transmits it to Direwolf. Direwolf sends it out over the airwaves. Magic happens and it decodes. So let's get that happening. So poof. We sent that out, 
Kish Util says processing the file, sending the data. Direwolf says sending the data. And did it receive? Oh, yeah. Direwolf says it has received. So this is the audio levels that I'm sending. I had to tweak the volume on my BTEC 6x2. It was full bars all the way to the end. So I, I put it down somewhere in the middle. Uh, position overlay green star. So this is all that extra gook that I that I tossed in there. No idea. Um, let's see. This is the <laughs> the GPS coordinates that I copied from the other message. This is not, I don't even know what location this is. And then here is the message that I sent. Test message from RT95. We are in business. This is fantastic. I love this. This is great. Man, I have been waiting to do this for ever. I don't even know how long I've been waiting to do this. Like we're gonna send computer-based text messages back and forth over radio waves. Sign me up. So I signed myself up. There is a bunch of stuff down in the description where you can get the Redivis RT95 radio. Uh, you've got a cheap ethernet cable, but I've listed a, a good gas station to get one from down there. The cheap sound card. I'm using an old Creative Labs USB sound card that I have. It's no longer available, but the Sovereign card that I linked in the description down below has definitely 100% has worked in Linux before, so I have no problems with that. My friend KM4ACK Jason has used it quite a bit, so I will link that one as well. It will do the same thing. The audio splitter cable, um, you know, I'll have to find one of those for you, but I will. It'll be down there. And we will be good to go. Where do we go from here? There's a lot of places we can go from here. But I wanted to get this little short bit out to you, just this proof of concept. And from here, we've got some things that we need to solve still but this is amazing. I love it. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.